Welcome to Women's Business Report. I'm Alvin Jones, the series creator and executive producer. Women's Business Report was launched in March of 2015 to coincide with Women's History Month. It started off as a special, but it was so well received that it became a television series. We are happy to launch our sixth season, and uh, this show is a tribute to our alumna. In this fast half hour, we're going to take you through six years of Women's Business Report. The people, the organizations, the events, all of the things that make this show so wonderful. So glad you're watching. This is Women's Business Report. With We Care Services Incorporated, we show people, middle income America, how to do what the wealthy do. Put your money where it goes to work for you. As a former teacher in Prince George's County Public Schools, I started teaching in Washington, D.C., where I was born and raised. My parents were the proud owners of Gill's Valet on Minnesota Avenue next to Pep Boys. We started that family business in 1963. As a protege of a family business owner, I always wanted to own my own business. We have eight locations, six in the district, and two in Prince George's County. Today we're at our Anacostia Gateway location here at Martin Luther King and Good Hope Road. We are a full service bank. We do loans, uh, commercial real estate, church loans, residential loans, um, all different types of loans. We do a lot of work in the community. I'm very proud of all the work that we do in the community. We work with the Collective Empowerment Group, which is a group of churches in the district in Prince George's County. We work with Operation Hope and do a lot of financial literacy and financial empowerment with the seniors, as well as the United Planning Organization. I am the financial navigator. I am a financial navigator. What I do is help women navigate the rough waters towards their financial independence to really be, do, and have their hearts to dire. Whether that's saving money for retirement, sending them, uh, their kids to college, traveling the world, buying that new house, whatever the case may be. Here we are in this beautiful park, directly across the street from where the first family will be moving in just about two weeks or so. So imagine living two doors down from neighbors that most people want to live next door to. You can see that the contractors are preparing. Looks like they have a gatehouse up front at the main entrance. Looks like Secret Service will be outside, or at least based outside of the driveway area. Talk about security. This is going to be one of the most secured neighborhoods probably in the United States of America because again, you have Obama here and you have Ivanka just right around the corner. And my listing is nestled right in between both of those homes. For 3.8 million, four bedrooms, four and a half bath. This is Women's Business Report. I'm Alvin Jones, the show's creator and executive producer. We're featuring an alumni edition in this segment, highlights our features that we had on women organizations and women business events. Now, Women's Business Report is the place to find out what's going on with women executives, women entrepreneurs, and women's business owners. We've had the great opportunity to work with some fantastic organizations that support women in business. Here are some of those organizations. Hello, Women's Business Report. I'm Cynthia Patton. I'm the Chief Compliance Officer from Amgen, and I am at the AWIS Business Meeting. Today, it's been fantastic. One of the reasons that I'm here is that there's so many young women in science who need to see role models, and I'm hoping to show them through my efforts and the work that I'm doing here that they can ascribe to being successful in science, in STEM in general. Hello, Women's Business Report. Um, I'm Erica Small Cisco, the program manager at the Women's Business Center at Old Dominion University, Center for Enterprise Innovation in Norfolk, Virginia. I'm here today at the National Conference with the Association of Women's Business Centers, and this is our national leadership conference for the Women's Business Centers. I love, this is an annual event, um, my third conference, and I love this conference because I get to meet so many amazing women from all over the country and men who come together to talk about our, um, our centers, um, what we can do to promote our centers and move our program forward. 
WIRE stands for Women in Retail Real Estate, and it was founded about 29 years ago. So we're right on the cusp of a 30-year anniversary. It was founded by two women, uh, one of whom is still involved in the organization, Marilyn Coolidge. Hera Hub is a female-focused co-working space that's designed to support professional women who work from home primarily, but need a professional workspace to meet their clients, uh, to be part of a broader community, and to help them, support them in helping them grow their businesses. For more information about Hera Hub and our membership and community, please feel free to visit our website at herahub.com slash DC. Thank you for watching Women's Business Report. I'm Alvin Jones as we kick off our sixth season with an alumna edition. Now, fashion and beauty has always been a tremendous business, providing billions of dollars in revenue. And some of the women that you're going to see are leaders in the fashion and beauty industry, like Miriam Hadari, Silver Logan Sharp, Idi Cisnero, Bethany Frankel, Sarah LaFur, and Miko Branch become an entrepreneur technically, I guess, until mid to late 30s. Looking back, I realized, oh, when I worked at that bakery in high school to pay for the keg party I had, oh, that was being an entrepreneur. <laughs> oh, you know, literally, like, oh, I remember I had that nightclub party in, in I'm not kidding, this is all real, like in senior year in high school, and we rented out this club and I had these bracelets and charged people. So I guess I was an entrepreneur, but I didn't even know the word. and. I didn't think about it that way. I've just always been a person that if I think of an idea, I want to execute it, and I want to see what's possible. And once you do it, once you strike the match, then it's easier to do other things. It's really the first time. Like anyone who has money says it's really the first either 100,000 or million that's the hardest. And then once they do that, they feel like they could always do it again. But I was really broke until you know, less than 10 years ago, and I had no idea that it was going to happen for me. And it's kind of like being an actor where, you know, you, they could be great and they keep going and they don't really have upper mobility and then one day if it pops off, then their whole life changes. Being an entrepreneur is kind of like that too. No one's taking you seriously. You're just that person with that idea. It's so much more challenging now than it used to be because there wasn't even a word entrepreneur and women weren't, you know, as so successful in business in the fastest growing sector. And I started working in a hospital, cleaning the hospital. So I was like, okay, I will do a cleaning company. Then I started my cleaning company. I have like three girls working for me and I was cleaning the house too. And after that, I get pregnant on my eight years old. So I cannot clean house no more. So after that, I was like, oh no. I will do my business, another kind of business. And that when I opened the first salon, I start Dominican salon. I said I was like, okay, I have to open another salon. It was like almost a month after I opened the first salon. Then I opened Reflection Dominican salon first. And then I said that I was like every year open another, open another. And now I have four locations and the way to open Reflection 5. That will be in Apple Margoto, Maryland. Any woman who wants to start her own business, I would simply tell her to just do it. In the just doing of it, there's so much knowledge, there's so much wisdom uh, to gain. Um, failure is certainly something that you want to put aside, and in your, in your experiences, you're going to be able to tap back into that so many times over and over again. So I would encourage you to just do it. You, we're in a time now where there's an internet, there's so much information available. Certainly do your research. Um, if there's any mentors, if there's anyone that you want to speak to, do that. But the quicker you can get to doing it, please, please, please get Get to it because um, you'll learn so much and the good news is you might have success that first time around.
When my sister T.G. Branch and I first got that deal from Target, we were so excited. We were so, so happy to have, um, to be able to have that opportunity to be on those Target shelves and it just meant success. One thing that we didn't know is there was so much to learn and uh, we also understood, you know, over time that we knew nothing about this industry. We had to learn from scratch. Uh, it was during a time when we didn't have any mentors in that industry, so learning from scratch, it took us longer to learn the lessons, but they stuck. And uh, the good news is that we were able to keep our shirts on and be an industry leader uh, in the beauty industry. So I'm proud to say that um, all the lessons and all the experiences that we have, have had have, have really served us well. Particularly for females and women in business, it's so important to put fear aside. Fear is probably one of the biggest, biggest demons, one of the biggest, biggest giants or enemies that we face. And I encourage you to put fear aside because you'll find, you know, once you do it, once you experience it, even if you experience failure, you'll find that you'll be able to overcome hurdles and fear will be something that's secondary. So don't make fear uh, be your primary uh, uh, obstacle. Get past it, just do it and learn from it and move on. My name is Mariam Heydari. I'm a designer and founder of Heydari Design. Oh, 30 years ago, I decided to have my own business. And I opened a retail shop in Georgetown. 18 years later, I realized the gap in a fashion. Designer was not doing exactly what at that time the woman needs. There was a gap between the sizes, so the best uh, size in the store would, was up to like 10, 12. And uh, I decided to try to complete that gap and create the Hey Daddy design. You know, just because you have to wear a long sleeve jacket or perhaps a longer skirt, it doesn't mean that you have to be unfashionable or unstylish. And I think that's what's been so fun about working with the customers in DC because they see our clothes and they say, oh wow, that's completely appropriate and yet it's still stylish in all the ways that I want to be. So that's been fun for us.
feel like a star. Like a star. Rock your silverware. Silverware rock out. I'll rock on my silverware. What I'm gonna wear on my upcoming Christmas tour? Silverware, of course. 제 목걸이가 마음에 드시면 실버웨어를 검색해 주세요. Hey, this is Nile Rogers here, shouting out my girl Silver and her fabulous jewelry Silverware. I can rock it anywhere in the world, whether I'm here in Ibiza chilling or walking the red carpet. Silverware, the baddest jewelry in the world. This is the alumni edition of Women's Business Report. Hi, I'm Alvin Jones as we kick off our seventh season. I'm the show's creator and executive producer, and we are following COVID protocols. So I'm the only one here, so I guess you're stuck with me. But actually, the main thing is that we've got some very special people in this segment. Folks like Dr. Maya Rockamore, who heads Global Policy Solutions. She's also the widow of the late Congressman Elijah Cummings from Baltimore, Maryland. He and I have the same birthday. Also, Dr. Jen Welter, the first female coach in the NFL, and she's also one of the coaches you can choose if you play Madden football. Then on top of that, we've got two women who have battled through some really, really tough medical challenges, and they're still going strong. You're going to be inspired. This segment right here on Women's Business Report starts now. Hey, this is Dr. Jen Welter. We are at the Gridiron Girls Camp here in the DMV. It is our 13th camp around the, night, the nation. I can coach anybody in football. I can teach anybody like you are how to catch a pass, but most guys will say, oh, well, girls can't catch. No, no one showed them the fundamentals that we showed them. And now any of these girls will feel comfortable going, say there's a pickup game in the neighborhood. Well, now I know I can catch. I worked on the Keep Playing Like a Girl campaign. And I'll never forget four stats. Said seven out of ten girls feel like society doesn't support them in sports. Seven out of ten girls feel like there are not enough visible female role models in sports. Seven out of ten girls feel like they don't belong in sports. To me, this is about bringing that full circle. Showing them that there's no game that they cannot play and no field they do not belong in or on. Giving them the opportunity to get out there and do it. Show them there's something for them and put them in a situation where they get to interact with some of the women who are the best in the game. And all of the people here who are coaching you today are part of my football family. And guess what? You're now all a part of our football family. How cool is that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I really believe that there has never been a time that was better for girls growing up who loved football. Hello, Women's Business Report. My name is Maya Rockymore. I'm President and CEO of Global Policy Solutions and the Center for Global Policy Solutions. I arrived in Washington, D.C. in 1997 to collect data for my dissertation, and that started a career on the Hill. I was recruited to join the staff of the House Ways and Means Committee, where I worked on Social Security issues, and then I was recruited to join Congressman Charlie Rangel's office as his AA Chief of Staff. Uh, where I stayed and learned the ins and outs of how to run a congressional office for a couple of years. But after that, I went into the think tank world. I worked for the National Urban League, and I also worked as the vice president of research and programs at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And while I was in that position, and in all the positions I'd had previously, I began to really think about you know, what I wanted to do in terms of my future. I really wanted to have a role where I could shape the direction of my future. Future, and however my career evolved, I wanted to have more control over it. Uh, and so, you know, so the, the, the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, you know, there was a change in leadership. I wanted the job. They said, you know, that I was too young. Uh, and so I never even got an interview. And that shocked me because I felt like I had done a great job for them. I, you know, raised a lot of money. Uh, I had managed some programs. I'd started a few initiatives. And so I began to think seriously. You know, if I could do this for another institution, why can't I do it for myself? 
Good morning, Women's Business Report. I am Lisa Phillips. I'm the owner of Celebrate Us Workforce Training. And today we are in my classroom to talk about what has happened to me. I am so excited to, um, to finally get to tell my story. Uh, so I guess the best place to start is to start December the 11th of 2017. December the 11th of 2017, I was a struggling entrepreneur, just like most entrepreneurs trying to hold together my business. I had a wonderful event and party business that I was just trying to hold on to for dear life. And then on December the 12th, my life changed. On December the 12th, I could no longer deal with this a nagging, nagging headache. And the headache had gotten so progressively difficult that I couldn't even move my neck. And so I said, no, nope, you know what? I need to go get this checked out. And lo and behold, I got news that nobody wants to hear. I was told that I had a brain tumor. And what's so interesting, and this is when you know that you are a real entrepreneur. Imagine hearing devastating news like that and all you're thinking about are your customers. All you're thinking about are all the, the, the parties that you have and all of the things that you have to do that you're, you know, like, it is so crazy. But I heard the diagnosis, but it just launched me immediately into entrepreneurial uh, mode. And so I know that sounds weird, but that's when you know you are a true entrepreneur, that you're always focused on your customers. In the nick of time, the Elite Mobile Salon and Spa was created because of a need. It was created because of a need that I originally had. When I was 18, I was diagnosed with a severe form of multiple sclerosis. And at that time, I was a senior in high school, and it was so severe, I had to leave high school. I never went back to high school again. And we did a lot of treatments. I went to Johns Hopkins, and they said we need to do chemotherapy. People always ask me, chemotherapy for MS, but that was the thing that they decided to do for me. So being 18, I underwent chemotherapy, lost all my hair. I had all the side effects of chemotherapy, the not so fun things, but the goal was to get me up and walking and to allow the MS to slow down. One day on our way back from Baltimore, my mom said, I have a surprise for you. I had no clue what she was talking about. At this point, I wasn't walking. I was having a lot of MS symptoms and I just wanted to get home. So they wheeled me into the house and in the living room was a nail technician. She was sitting there with all of the supplies and equipment to do a manicure and pedicure. So that was amazing. It meant the world to me. I really couldn't get out of the house that often. So to have someone come to me at that time to give me a manicure and pedicure meant the world. Women's Business Report is centered right here in Washington, D.C. And of course, that's the hub of the government. That means the purchases that are made for the government are done right here. And that's why you have a lot of companies that do government contracting. We've got two ladies who not only do great work, they provide great services for the United States of America, and they employ lots of people. Hello, Women's Business Report. <laughs> My name is Luana Russell. I'm president of Business Management Associates. I am excited to be with you today, and thank you for taking some time out of your schedule to share it with me. I'd love to tell you my story, because it's actually a really funny story. I started BMA, Business Management Associates, in 2005. I started the company with about $500 at my kitchen table by myself. Everybody thought I was crazy. My grandmother said, you need to find yourself a good government job. Most people at 92 don't have much to do at home. So it's nice when you have a granddaughter with a business and she gives you a job. And I said, nah, that is not for me. And I went out and I struck it out on my own. I love Luana very much. I had uh, quite a bit of fun with her when she was growing up. And as a young lady, she is perfect. I think I've always been an entrepreneur in some way, shape or form. And they say that it takes two, three, maybe four 
um, ventures for an entrepreneur to actually strike gold, so to speak. And with BMA, we finally got into a rhythm. And I think the learning over the years of striking out on my own in different capacities finally paid off. And so now we have a company with over 100 employees and we're having a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Tali Oberoi. I'm the CEO of C Squared Technologies. So uh, everybody asked me how I got uh, excited about this industry and how I got into this business. Well, this goes back a long ways. When I was a young woman uh, growing up in India, I was teaching the first generation of learners in my mom's school. And I realized that uh, I could teach all I wanted, but these folks had never left their homes. They were growing up in little shanty towns and they couldn't relate to the rest of the universe. So I thought, what a great idea it would be to bridge the gap between uh, these young uh, children and the rest of the world through technology. So of course, I set out on my journey. I had an epiphany that I could uh, look for technology, bring it to India, and, uh, and connect these kids to the rest of the universe. So um, that's what brought me to the United States. I came as a tourist with 200 bucks and a backpack, but uh, glint in my eyes because I wanted to look for technology. But you know, what is technology? When you normally think of construction, a lot of times you don't think of women business owners. And if that's the way you have thought, well, today you're gonna think differently. I've got some women who are running who are CEOs, who are the bosses of construction companies. Take a look at them right now. Hello, Women's Business Report. This is Kim Driggs with D2 Site Work. We're here at Merch Elementary School in Washington, D.C. On one of our job sites, we're serving as a subcontractor, uh, performing the site work services. Hi, my name is Teresa Kern. I own MA Rebar Services in Chicago and I am also the current national president of Women Construction Owners and Executives USA. After working 14 years in a male-dominated construction industry, as a female, I was denied many promotion passovers and often told a woman in construction, that's not your job and you can't do it. Think outside of your comfort zone, thinking out of the box. Be able to take that passion within you and that vision and move forward and have the momentum to keep going no matter what. Stay the course, don't give up. I encourage you, start today. I'd like to thank you for tuning into Women's Business Report. I'm Alvin Jones, the creator and executive producer. And actually, this was a thing of love. Um, I'm an automotive journalist and I ran into a woman by the name of Joyce Arndt. And Joyce had Ray's Auto Body Shop. She took over her husband's shop and kept it running. And it was just so amazing to see a woman with a body shop. And I'll tell you, she was actually the uh, reason I created this show. When I saw her, I'm like, there has to be uh, a show that talks about women who have their own businesses. And I also want to do a shout out to my late Aunt Essie and my late Aunt Rosa. They also had uh, little corner stores in North Carolina. And when I was young and I was about this high, I'd go to the store and they would say, want some candy ice cream? And I'm like, I don't have any money. And they go, don't worry about it. And they would give me candy. So ever since I was this tall, I've always liked women-owned businesses.